Crisis on Infinite Earths was a monumental achievement and a lot of fun, but it would have been even better if a couple more DC characters had showed up to play. In the end, we plain missed these folks, and if you're a DC superfan, you probably did too. Felicity Smoke wasn't supposed to be a major player in the Arrowverse. Emily Bett Rickard's character was originally conceived as a one-off guest appearance, designed to pop up in a single episode and nothing more. Look, I don't want to get in the middle of some Shakespearean family drama thing. What? History had other plans. Rickard's winning performance, as well as her undeniable chemistry with Arrow star Stephen Amell, quickly convinced Arrow's producers to bring Felicity back for more. It took less than a season for Felicity to become part of Arrow's regular cast. By season two, she was Arrow's heart and soul, and ultimately ended up as both Oliver Queen's wife and the mother of his children. That's why it's so weird that Felicity sat out Crisis entirely. Sure, Rickards left Arrow after season seven, but she's returning for the series finale. She couldn't pop by for a quick cameo in the big crossover event, too? The Crisis wasn't just the biggest threat the Arrowverse has ever faced, it was also an epic send-off for Oliver Queen. As such, it just felt strange that Felicity wasn't there to say goodbye. In the comics, Crisis on Infinite Earths was Wally West's time to shine. In Crisis on Infinite Earths No. 8, Barry Allen, Wally's mentor, sacrificed himself to destroy the Anti-Monitor's powerful antimatter gun, saving the remaining universes from destruction. Once the Anti-Monitor's plans are foiled, Wally West sheds the name Kid Flash and takes over for Barry. Wally was more than a sidekick. He was the DC Universe's main Flash for almost 25 years. Of course, on television, neither Barry nor Flash star Grant Gustin are going anywhere. In the speedster ranks, Kid Flash still plays second fiddle. Even so, it would have been nice to see Kid Flash make an appearance in the CW's big crossover. Wally has been a regular fixture in the Arrowverse since 2015, when actor Kanan Lonsdale stepped into the role, and while we haven't seen much of Kid Flash since Legends of Tomorrow's Season 3 finale, Kid Flash is already scheduled to return to The Flash after Crisis. Given everything that went down during the event, Barry really could have used his help here, too. Of course, if you really want to see what Wally and Felicity were up to during Crisis on Infinite Earths, you can always check out DC's spin-off comic, which was co-written by Crisis creator Marv Wolfman. That's not the same thing as seeing the characters on screen, though. Their absence stood out like a sore thumb. Crisis on Infinite Earths had a Batman. It had three different Supermen. Where the heck was Wonder Woman? The third and final member of DC's Trinity isn't just one of the best-known superheroes on the planet, the Amazonian warrior was the star of her very own television show, which debuted in 1975 and starred actress and singer Linda Carter. In fact, Carter already has a role in the Arrowverse. In Supergirl, she plays Olivia Marsden, a shape-shifting alien who, at one point, was also the president of the United States. Remind the world that there is still goodness here. Be that beacon of hope that we still need. Carter appeared in five episodes of Supergirl, and we're going to assume that executive producer Greg Berlanti and the rest of the Crisis team still have her phone number. Maybe Warner Brothers didn't want Crisis on Infinite Earths to steal any thunder from Wonder Woman 1984. Still, maybe a cameo wouldn't have meant that Carter needed to suit up. An older, retired Diana Prince would have fit in well with Kevin Conroy's grizzled, jaded Bruce Wayne and Brandon Routh's graying Man of Steel. What a missed opportunity. The CW's mega crossover featured characters from almost every major television show based on a DC comic. Birds of Prey, Batman 66, the 90s version of The Flash, they're all there. Heck, even Lucifer, which is only tangentially related to the DC universe, got a brief but memorable nod. But the key word there is almost. Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, the hit 90s show that reimagined the relationship between Lois Lane and Superman as a moonlighting-style romantic comedy, didn't get a single nod. No cameo, no offhand mention or super-obscure easter egg. Heck, even Super Friends got a nod in Crisis on Infinite Earths, but Lois and Clark? A legitimate ratings hit? Nothing. Even stranger, both Lois and Clark's stars have established relationships with the Arrowverse. Dean Cain, who played Superman on Lois and Clark, has a recurring role on Supergirl as Kara Danvers' adopted father. Terry Hatcher played the Daxamite queen Rhea, Supergirl's second season Big Bad. Both actors are clearly open to appearing on The CW. 
They've done it before, just oddly, not this time. The Joker plays a minor role in Crisis on Infinite Earths, but you'd be forgiven for not noticing. He doesn't appear on screen. Nobody ever says his name. Still, he's there. When our heroes visit Earth-96 to recruit Brandon Routh's Man of Tomorrow, the alternate universe Superman mentions that a reject from Gotham gassed the Daily Planet, killing 48 people. That's a direct reference to Mark Wade and Alex Ross's graphic novel Kingdom Come, on which Superman 96 is based. In that story, the Joker attacks the Daily Planet and murders Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and a bunch of Superman's other friends. That begins a chain of events that concludes with Superman hanging up his cape and retiring, leaving the fate of the world in the hands of a new generation of heroes. Ralph Superman has the same tragic backstory. He even sports the black and red insignia that the Kingdom Come Superman wears when he comes out of hiding. But it would have been even more powerful if Crisis had been able to actually show the Clown Prince of Crime. Do you want to know why I use a knife? Guns are too quick. You can't savor all the little emotions. Maybe Warner Brothers didn't want to distract from Joaquin Phoenix's award-winning turn as the character. Maybe the Arrowverse has plans for Joker down the line. Who knows? Still, something, even if it was just Batman the Animated Series actor Mark Hamill performing the Joker's signature laugh off screen, would have gone a long way. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.